We are ready to go racing. We have five red lights. It is lights out and away we go. Let's see how good a start Flores can get off pole position. It looks like he's pretty evenly matched with Yano. As we all go down into turn one, there's a full CD off right at the back. And Flores already goes defensive into turn one. Yano going to have to go to the outside. And he's carried much more speed around the outside. I think he's going to have Flores into turn two. And he does. Yano takes the lead of the race as Alonso is sideways. He's hit a Mercedes. He's been com carried completely off the track. And we said there might be a crash at the start. It looks like that has happened already. Yeah, and Big C running wide at, at turn one, and that allows Curly to dive down the inside of turn four. A great move from the Ferrari driver. So the pad user up to P6 for the time being. As Michael is going side by side with Army Danny, and he's spun off, and the Haas is round and dropping, well, dropping an awful lot of positions. As Flying Finn and Tim Palmer going side by side as well. I thought the Renault was going to pull into the pits there for a moment, but he didn't quite go for that on the end. As everybody is jostling on the straights to try and get... Slipstream into turn one. Let's see if Flying Finn can make a move down the inside of Michael, down the inside of the championship leader into turn one. And he just about leaves him enough space and they will still be side by side on the exit of turn two into the chicane of turns three and four. Michael just about manages to stay ahead and he's slowly starting to work his way through the field as Jaythorn almost loses it out of the final corner. And now he's going to get passed by Big C, who I believe he just passed on the previous lap. So the Toro Rosso is going to regain that position to turn one. Jaythorn trying to stick it around the outside, but I don't think the Toro Rosso has left him enough space to do that and Big C moves himself back up into P8 and that could potentially give Michael a chance to pounce into the next chicane no not quite and he still has to sit behind for P10 as that is Alberto and Flying Finn going side by side and Alberto loses another position and the Flying Finn moves up as I think that's Michael going for a move down the inside of Jay Thorne in the Sauber and then we side by side through the next right hander and Michael just about manages to make that one stick that is a very nice opportunistic move and that is now P9 for the McLaren driver yeah and that's true and flying Finn going side by side with Michael because Michael sort of got boxed in by J4 and ahead going into turn 10 but Michael defending it very nicely to maintain P10 as Tim Palm and Alberto as well are going side by side behind and Tim Palm manages to gain another position and I believe that is Alberto losing another one and he seems to be really struggling in this race he's kind of going backwards as he goes down the inside though into the final corner of the Red Bull but cannot quite get the traction to fight again into turn one so I imagine that will probably be moved done for now anyways behind them we have Clarkie and Curly fighting it out over P5 and Curly's stunning start continues in this race he's now putting that Williams under all kinds of pressure as we go into senior is Clarkie going to go defensive no he's not he's allowed the Ferrari to have the inside which could be a fatal error and it is as Curly moves up into P5 and Flores picks up a three second time penalty as Oli D dives down the inside of Clarkie as well. So Clarkie loses two positions in two corners really. But the main talking part of that, that little section there is Flores picking up a three second time penalty already. As Flying Finn is side by side with Jaythorn. That is, he's been pushed wide and he's almost off the track completely and almost losing it there as Michael's going to go for a double overtake. He'll have the inside for the next chicane. He almost hit Jaythorn on the straight. Is he going to send it into the chicane? No, he's not. Thorn has come back out of nowhere. Trying to go around the outside of the Toro Rosso and he hasn't quite managed to do that. And now Michael's getting passed by Tim Palm as well, who's come out of nowhere and now getting ahead of the McLaren. And that's a horrible section of corner to Michael as he has dropped position after position and he is now behind the Red Bull as well. And Williams Alex might be getting involved as well as this train goes from what? P almost P8 down to P13. This is getting very, very busy and exactly what Michael did not want in this race. Jaythorn and Tim Palm are going to go side by side into the left-hander of turn one. Michael's just going to sit back and he's actually been passed as well by Williams Alex and he's down into P13 now. As Alex with a stunning move out of nowhere. I didn't even see him there on Michael's screen. And he's now closing right up to the back of Jaythorn as well. Is he going to look for another move down the inside? No, not quite. So they hold position for now but this midfield scrap is not over. This is making Baku look like a, a good, calm, easy race for him. Now, as Tim Palm skips the chicane, he's oh gone completely dear. off. He's gone completely off as Jaythorn almost misses the chicane as well. He slides his way through there. And Tim, Port, Tim Palm, I think, justly picks himself up a five-second penalty for that. As now, Williams Alex is looking to try and get past Jaythorn. He's miles ahead of, um, of Michael behind. And they are going to be going side-by-side side into the next corner. And Alex picks up another position. So he's now the one slowly working his way through the field. As Jaythorn's very wide. And surely that's going to give Michael a chance... Thorn hasn't even got back on the track yet and Michael is so close to the back of that Sauber. Is he going to go down the inside into the next one? Yes, he is. Thorn doesn't leave him a huge amount of space though. Cuts that one off nicely but then goes wide again. Where oh, is Thorn going? And he's out. off into the wall and he's lost his wheel. What on earth happened there? Oh, it, It's almost like 
He just got a, a, an aero stall there, and that was it. Game over. Flew off the track. All just got frustrated and ended his race. But is it maybe worth a gamble for some of these guys? As yes, it is. Yano's coming in, and Flores is coming in as well. So they are all taking advantage of this virtual safety car. Yeah, why not? It's a free pit stop. Uh, a fresh set of inters. It's clearly not going to be dry anytime soon. Uh, has anyone stayed out? Uh, no, Curly won't be. And Finn having a severe collision with Big C for some reason. And he's lost half his wing. What on earth's happened there, Torosso? That's a very odd one. As Flores has actually been, Flores has been held in the pits, and he's lost a position there. He's lost a position not only to Deagle Killer but also to Epic Gamer as well. And he is now what down in P4 in this race, and he's. They've all come out behind Flying Fiend and the Toro Rosso. So that has really worked out extremely well for Epic Gamer and Yano, but not so well at all for Deagle Killer and Flores, who's down at P7, actually. Yeah, but one person who could be benefiting from this massively, and he didn't have the best qualifying session, is Tim Palm. He's done 11 mm. laps on those inters, more than anyone else left on track. So if he can just... You have to, he, he should just let Flores... Oh, they banged wheels. Goodness me, that could have been a huge accident. If Tim Palm can just, you know, slow down a bit and just stretch this out a bit, he's got a big gap to Curly behind. Uh, you know, when, when the pit stops come, even if it is a double stack, he will still be in a pretty good top 10 position. So we think that the dry tyres are now fast. You would assume that both these two leaders would now come into the pits and Yano stays out. Oh, could that be the first mistake he's made? DRS is enabled. Just oh. as Epic Gamer comes into the pits, he has called that perfectly. And Yano is going to be out there stranded on a set of the intermediate tyres on what is now a dry track. That could be the end of his challenge for the lead. And Yano has come into the pits now for that set of super softs. And let's stay on board with him as he comes out of the pits. Uh, Where is what, Epic Gamer this, going to be? This is going to be mighty close. So let's stay with Epic Gamer in the Haas. In front of him, surely he'll be able to see that full city as he comes out of the pits. And there he is. He takes the lead of this race just oh. about. Yano Racing is just behind as Alex retires from the session. His nightmare of a race finally comes to the end. And Yano's two and a half seconds back from Epic Gamer. That call from the Haas was perfect. Yeah, absolutely brilliant from Epic. You know, he just bid his time and he was playing some mind games with Yano all that time. But Deagle and Flores going side by side. Deagle, surprisingly, has gone for the soft tyres for some reason. So he's now under enormous threat from Flores. At least he would be if Flores didn't have so many penalties. Yeah, I mean, whatever, hap whatever happens between these two, you would assume that Flores' penalties will put him comfortably behind the Red Bull anyway. But whether Deagle Killer knows that is another question. And maybe, actually, given the colder temperatures, his soft tyres might be working reasonably well. But this should be an easy move, surely, for Flores now. He has the DRS open and he has the inside for the chicane as well. This should be a very simple move. And it is, in the end, down the inside of the chicane. He's even able to take the racing line before we even get to the corner. So, Flores now back up into P3, but whether he'll stay there, given his penalties, is another question. He's got way more battery than Epic Gamer. He's been stockpiling it this lap. He's going to go for an all-out assault now or never, surely. And he is so close to the back of that Haas. If he can keep it together through this next right-hander, surely he's got to be close enough to Epic Gamer to go for a move down this straight. He's turned up his ERS into overtake. Finally, Epic Gamer already goes defensive way before we even get into the chicane. Yano is closing. He's closing again. Is he going to look to the inside? No, he's not. Epic Gamer forces him to the outside. He looks fully around the outside as he made that one stick. What a move this would be. And Yano takes the lead of this race with a stunning move around the outside. But can Epic Gamer do anything to come back at him into senior? He's running low on fuel. He's running low on ERS. And there's nothing he can do at this point. So on lap 25 of 27, Yano takes the lead of this race. And is there anything left for Epic Gamer here? Yeah, there's a crazy battle going on for P9 between Big C, Danny, Freak and Tim Palm. As Big C is trying to defend into the chicane and he just about manages to stay ahead as all five of these cars really are fighting over what is P9 and P10, the final points paying positions here. Big C is going to have to go defensive into that right-hander. Army Danny G is trying to carry it all the way around the outside. This would be some move if he manages to pull it off. He's still there on the outside of Big C. Can he go all the way around the outside of this next right? I don't think there's quite enough space there, but somehow he is still there. But finally, Big C pulls ahead, and that could be uh, the Haas under pressure from the Mercedes behind as well. Freak is trying to look around the outside. Nothing doing there. Though. And now Big C's under pressure once again from Danny as he looks for the inside for the final few corners. That 
could be a good move for Danny, actually. Down the inside into the final corner. Big C looks back down the inside, though. Side by side with the Haas. What a battle this is turning into, and he just about gets it back. And he's going to have the DRS as well as he's trying to get past into turn one. It is four wide into turn one for the final points paying positions here. Surely this cannot end well as, as NTG Freak is trying to get past all of them into turn one. It's still three wide as we hit the apex of turn two. And Big C somehow in all of this is still up in P9. I have no idea how he is hanging on here. And again, it's three wide into the next chicane. Big C again is ahead and Freak has been hit. And there's a huge amount of contact there. And Big C manages to maintain P9, although he's cut the chicane. Picked up a five-second stop-and-go penalty and Flying Finn is still side-by-side -side with uh, Army Danny G. And they have all... Yeah crashed there that was unbelievable racing but yeah. while all Yano, of that's been going on Yano's let's go heading. back to the lead as Yano he has survived this entire race what a drive from the Force India driver he was perfect in the wet conditions and he's been perfect in the dry conditions as well Yano crosses the line to win the French Grand Prix ahead of Epic Gamer who also comes home in an impressive second and then Floris will cross the line in P3 whether he finishes there with his number of penalties is going to be another question. Deagle Killer will come across the line of P4, but take that P3 away from Floris. And then it'll be Veloce Oli D with a solid P5 across the line. Not too bad at all from the Mercedes driver. And there's a bit of damage limitation for him after not the greatest of qualifyings. And then Curly setting the fastest lap of the race as well for good measure in a strong P6 for Ferrari. Clarkie then will cross the line of P7 ahead of Williams Alex in P8. Not too good a result for him and then the two Toro Rossos who've been battling all all day pretty much will cross the line in P9 and P10 and it's actually going to be side by side up to the line behind between Danny G and NTG Freak and the McLaren and the Red Bull behind them let's see how penalties affect all that and across the line it will be Flying Finn from Big C from VGI Michael who doesn't score any points whatsoever and don't forget that you can vote for your own driver of the day there is a link in the chat from the official AOR channel so make sure you go and do that and we'll see who eventually manages to pick that one up. But I would agree with you there. It has to be Yano, 100%. He has driven perfectly. Even though you could say that he messed up that, that call from going to the intermediates to the dry tyres. But he more than rescued it. And, well, it was a brilliant drive in the end. And more than deserving of a victory. Yes. But, you know, Epic Gamer, he, he really, you know, he put on a great drive as well. He just couldn't get past him in, in the interstint where he clearly had better performance than Yano at that point. But, you know, Yano, once it went dry... You know, he was he was literally, as I said earlier, a man possessed trying to get past, and it was a great move to get it done. Great racing from those two. Yeah, it was indeed. As we'll take a look at the final results, then it is Yano Racing who takes his first victory of the season ahead of Epic Gamer in second, with Deagle Killer a strong third for Red Bull, and then Veloce Holly T actually getting P4 because Flores had 12 seconds worth of time penalties. That is frankly ridiculous and then curly up in p6 again strong from him with williams alex ahead of his williams teammate clark in p8 and then the two torosses of flying finn and big c rounding out the top 10 and then outside of our top 10 we have vgi michael tim palm danny mg cass mtg freak aresi alberto and then i think alberto actually was our the last of our finishers but what a race once again that was awesome but that is going to round out our coverage of this round eight number French Grand Prix. Thank you all very much for joining us. Make sure you go and check out the PC stream, which is live now, and then the Xbox stream later on. But thank you all very much for joining us, and we will see you next week. Goodbye.